The meeting is called to order at 7.03 p.m. Please rise and the clerk will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. All right, may I have a motion and a second that the agenda of March 13th, 2018 be approved as submitted. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, thank you. All right, may I have a motion and a second for the um, approval of the following consent agenda to include the minutes of February 27th, 2018. Um, Meeting is submitted, acceptance of recommendations from the Committee on Special Education, acceptance of recommendations from the Committee on Preschool Special Education, acceptance of recommendations from the Superintendent for Personnel Changes, and the request for recommended bidders is, po is put forth in your agenda, and approval of Mercy Student to attend EMCC is uh, submitted on the agenda. So, second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, thank you. Attached is the Treasurer's Report for the month ending January 31st, 2018. May I have a motion and a second that the Treasurer's Report, including the Cash Report, General Fund Cash Report, the General Fund Revenue Status Report, General Fund Budget Status Report, School Lunch Fund Cash Report, and School Lunch Fund Revenue and Expense Budget Report for the month ending January 31st, January 31st, 2018, be approved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, thank you. All right, no special reports tonight? Okay, so this is visitor speaking time. Every meeting, time is provided within the agenda for residents to bring concerns and comments to the board. <clears throat> comments should not be related to any particular individual or to the specifics of negotiations since it is not proper for the board to discuss these issues in public session. A request to speak comment form must be filled out prior to the start of the citizen's comment period and given to the district clerk. It is expected that speakers will limit their comments to five minutes or less. The board reserves the right to limit the total amount of time spent on the citizen's comment period based on the length of the agenda. Written communication to the Board of Education is encouraged as well. I understand we have a visitor tonight. Yes. Um, Mr. Podori? Polidori. I'm sorry. Uh, would you like to come to the table, please? Sure. Welcome, and if you could state your name and your address, please. Sure, uh, John Polidori, 258 Hillary Lane. Uh, thank you very much for the for the opportunity to speak, and uh, I'm going to apologize in advance if I miss a few topics. I know this is not a Q&A back and forth session, uh, but there's been something that's been weighing on me that I'd like to, that I think has been weighing on a lot of people that I'd like to share. Um, but members of the board and uh, Penfield residents, um, before I get started, I want to thank Superintendent Tom Putnam because uh, he not only responded to my emails on this, but my calls. And he's been very gracious and has helped me through understanding a lot of what I'm about to ask about. Um, I know you might, may not be able to provide a lot of information or even um, uh, share certain bits of information at this time, which is understandable. Uh, to be clear and to cut to the chase, my topic is in regards to school safety, um, especially in what we've witnessed in 2018. Um, last week alone, there was three schools in central New York that were simultaneously uh, on lockdown for all different reasons, but for, for all different concerns, but for all the same reason, which was domestic terror. Uh, in light of the, what is an epidemic of school violence, um, but most importantly, because I have my heart rooted in Penfield, I decided to become more of an advocate and accelerate my involvement to, in the desire to secure schools. And from what I'm aware, there's about six schools in this district 
and we need to find a way to make sure that we proactively protect all of them. And to go off script for a minute, I think everybody would agree when you have kids in the schools, I mean, they're your heart. That's all you want to do is make sure that you can protect them. And you can't when they walk out the door. You know, you have to be at the mercy of, of other things. So unfortunately, it feels like at this point, even though we want our kids to have a, an exemplary school experience in terms of the number one benefit being education, I think now we have to realize that the number one thing when they walk through those doors is their safety. So along with, um, from what I understand is uh, wonderful measures, um, I'd like to understand better and discuss and find ways to be able to provide um, school resource officers or other guards to be able to be a deterrent and a protector of our children while they are in schools. And while deterrents uh, are a means, um, they do work, they stop people from acting, although even there's a small percentage that don't. But, but hopefully those deterrents can help minimize problems once they happen. Um, separately and aside from this, I decided to contact um, the New York State Legislature to find out how and if they can help provide funding for, for these types of resources as well. I know that we have logistics and problems in terms of budgets, we have rules and regulations. Um, I haven't mastered the financials of the district budget by reading it as much as I've possibly tried to read. Uh, I'm aware there's challenges, and I think what we need to do when we think about the safety of our children is, with those challenges, how are we going to work getting around them to secure their safety? Um, and that, that is probably an, the most important thing now that I, I can't think of anything else that bothers me on a daily basis, which is thinking about parents sending their kids off to school and either the fear the children must have or the fear the parents must have. Um, again, I know that you can't provide a tremendous amount of answers or information right now, but I stated what my request was or what I'd like to try and see happen. I'm very grateful for the opportunity and what I'd really like to find out from the board, whether it's now or in the future, is one thing, which is how can we get these um, SROs or school resource officers or some type of proactive security in our schools. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, as you stated, you're correct, it's not a Q&A session, but Dr. Putnam, did you have any comments tonight? If you give me a microphone, I always have comments. <laughs> No, I just, John, thank you very much. We did, uh, we played some phone tag back and forth and some, some email back and forth, and I'm glad we were able to connect, and so I appreciate your comments about me whenever you have positive comments and the board hears them, and I'm sure it helps me out somewhere down the road. <laughs> I would tell you, just, I was doing a quick count. I think we have, uh, everybody up here um, either attends uh, Penfield schools or has sent their kids to school, and one of the great things thing about Penfield is we have a school board and, um, and administrators who, who live here, so if, I, if my count's right, eight people sitting here either attend, which would be Claire, our student <laughs> rep, or send students currently to school. So obviously safety is our number one priority. We realize that students need to feel safe before we can hit that second very close priority, which is a, a strong educational background um, and learning. And um, you know, so I appreciate, I would like to continue our conversations. We did talk a little bit about some funding, um, both um, Mark Elledge, John Piper, who's not here tonight, and myself were in Albany um, advocating for Penfield and public schools. And one of the uh, conversations we did have was around funding for um, SROs, as well as taking security measures out of the tax cap calculation, allowing school districts to have a little bit more leeway when it comes to security, and it wouldn't be impacted in that tax cap. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue advocating for those pieces. Um, and, uh, and hopefully you and I can talk as we continue to move forward to see what happens from the state and what we can do to continue to support our students. I am a strong believer, I'll just share, uh, and I think we talked about it, is, is that first line of defense is having what we do in Penfield is that whole student um, 
uh, focus in our schools. What I'm amazed at, especially even at the elementary ages, is that concept that we all know now in the airport, which is if you see something, say something. And it's amazing, especially when we hit our secondary levels, our students who come forward and share what they're seeing on social media, what they're hearing, what they're um, worried about, and that goes a long way to continue to be proactive. Um, your direct question is around SROs or, or sort of another form of armed guard, and it's something that the school district is continuing to look at. Um, but I don't have a specific answer for you yet, but I th think based on our last phone call, we decided that we would continue uh, speaking as we sort of move forward with the safety and security plans of the, of the school district. Thank you. Uh, and uh, one thing in regard to that, um, I know your focus is on Penfield, but Mark Elledge and I are also on the legislative committee, which uh, is the school districts all around Monroe County. So this is an ongoing conversation within that committee as well. So um, just so you know that T Penfield is doing its part as far as what Dr. Putnam just explained, and um, on a county level, um, there, there's an ongoing discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, and we wanted to thank you, too, for coming tonight, taking time out of your schedule, and letting us know how you feel about the issue. We always welcome the comments, and we appreciate you being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right. Claire, okay. you're up. <laughs> Okay, so um, last week, the entire school district celebrated Blue Ribbon Week in order to support and unite in kindness and students dressed in blue, pajamas, crazy socks, and as superheroes according to the corresponding school days in order to show their Blue Ribbon spirit. At Harris Hill, students also celebrated B Blue Ribbon Week by writing blue thank you cards to teachers and staff and sharing compliments to friends. And students dressed as Dr. Seuss characters in celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday. At Cobbles, Cobbles hosted STEM Family Game Night, where students and their families came back to school in the evening to test their critical thinking skills and challenges in games. And at Indian Landing, select student volunteers from Mercy worked in kindergarten classes as part of Indian Landing's partnership with Mercy Ministries. First graders also presented their own production of the book Can Turtle Fly during Reader's Theater, and Tech Club learned how to be Twitter interns in the computer lab after school. At Scribner, the PTA helped organize and host the annual Scribner Daddy-Daughter Dance. And at Bay Trail during lunch periods, student leaders, known as Bay Trail's best buddies, helped during lunch periods with signing posters that called out to spread the word to end the word. And Bay Trail drama and stage crew students showed amazing performances of the musical Zandu Jr. last weekend. At Penfield High School, the Cool to be Kind Club students handed out lolly flowers with, po with positive messages to spread kindness and smells on a gloomy Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And the Penfield Hi High School Math Counties team competed at St. John Fisher College last week. The PHS Model United Nations team also competed in Syracuse as delegates and chair members as part of the UNR conference. And finally, the Penfield Science Olympia team brought home six medals from the New York State competition. And um, something in light of school safety that um, schools actually across the entire district are doing is, um, well tomorrow is March 14th, which is also known as the National Walkout Day, um, a month after the Parkland shooting. And um, the Penfield Central School District will be hosting our own Penfield Strong Day, in which students from middle school, elementary school, and the high school will be participating by wearing red. And in light of the Parkland shooting that occurred last month, students from both, especially the middle school and the high school, have organized activities to make a difference in and stand up for their beliefs regarding school safety. Um, students in the middle school are listing the 17 acts of kindness, writing their names on slips of paper and linking them to form a chain in the cafeteria, and completing forms that show their interest in a letter writing workshop to express their concerns to elected officials and forms that sh share concerns about student safety. And students in the high school have o organized our own student-run walkout, walkout because we will not be physically walking out of the school, um, in which from 9.50 to 10.15 a.m., students will have the choice to participate in signing banners and writing letters to House and Senate representatives in the gyms. These letters and posters will be sent to our local and federal representatives as part of the Penfield's Right to School Safety and Penfield Strong movements. And many students saw a need to do something, and we greatly appreciate to the school and also the administration to, um, for helping us and just being able to, to project our voices and put our desires into safe and beneficial actions. Very nice. Thank you, Claire. Um, board members, any questions or comments for Claire? Yes, Dr. Putnam. 
Larry, just uh, I, I had an opportunity, obviously, to meet with you and the other student planners at the high school. And so um, I'm going to share something that I, I believe you were there when I shared um, at one of those meetings, which is there are times in my life um, with two little boys at home and then working in a school system my entire career where there's days I wake up where I worry about our future and, uh, you know, who's going to be paying my Social Security when I'm retired. And then I have meetings like I had with your group, uh, about 12, 14 uh, students, and it was, it's so powerful in terms of your, I get tingles thinking about it. I mean, that's the leadership we need in this world. What I loved about working with the students, and you said this here and for the board and the public, is both at Bay Trail and at the high school, these are student initiated activities and so and and the high school students were so understanding that there's a there's some policy and politics behind which is that as a school district we we really have to be careful on terms of picking sides of political arguments um, and so I just want to share with the board and the community is one of the things the students did is they did write sort of a form letter that you can send to legislators they're going to drop off but they were so open to the idea of leaving the areas blank so people can write in so so if you want and then sharing all the different legislation that New York and the federal government is working on and then you can write in what you're for or what you're against and it really is that voice of the student so mm -hmm. it's open in the sense that it's it's an amazing learning opportunity for our students it's an educationally focused uh, day um, we were able to work with you so instruction wasn't lost um, you understood our safety concerns with having students walk outside as opposed to being inside and we do have spaces for kids who and staff who aren't interested um, so they can work on homework or read during that short uh, time period so I just want to say thank you if you could bring that back to the students as well for all the work that you've done on behalf of the district it it really is uh, amazing leadership potential and we're talking about students in high school who just did an amazing job planning and then doing homework on this and then coming back with yeah. more plans and so if you ever go in education if you could please call mrs gregory so we can interview you for uh, <laughs> those are the leaders i need so yes, thank you indeed thank you. and um, dr putnam had uh, shared some of that with us too and it's very impressive and the board is very um we're very proud of what we're seeing in our future leaders so you should be proud and um you know, good luck tomorrow. I hope it all works out the way, you know, all your hard work and all your planning, hope it goes smoothly for you. Okay, thank and, you. And kudos. And we look forward to hearing about it at your next presentation. Yes, yep. definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Claire. Superintendent's reports. I always have to follow Claire. I know. <laughs> She's such a good it's job. It's a hard act to follow. Uh, so this meeting, I have my uh, student and staff honors, and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Sansusi for the next piece of our 2018-19 budget, which is the BOCES budget review, and then a little more on our 2018 elementary additions project update. Um, some really uh, great things to talk about. Uh, the PHS DECA team qualified for the state competition. So congratulations to team members Cameron Gage, Madison um, Hodley, AJ Kimmins, Hannah Lewis, Jamison Nguyens, Sierra Ramsey, Ryan Reynolds, Sarah Ryan, Noah Sabko, Justin Solomon, and Daniel Taddeo. And uh, our DECA team is relatively new at Penfield. We had one years ago, it went away, and now it's back. So Jamie Myrna, our business teacher is uh, the advisor and I just learned this this morning is that Cameron Gage uh, actually placed third in the state oh, wow. yeah. um, and so he'll be oh. traveling to Georgia for the national DECA competition and why that's really exciting is nobody uh, Jane, Mrs. Myrna's understanding is nobody from outside New York City has won the top three places mm -hmm. because they have <laughs> uh, specific public schools um, um, that are devoted to business and entrepreneurship and so the fact that a student from Penfield High School it's, it's pretty exciting and um, and Cameron's a great kid so congratulations Wow. Mock trial team, uh, congratulations to our PHS mock trial team. That's six of the members right there, um, but it's a much larger team. And they won round three of the competition at Brighton High School last Wednesday. And they're moving on to the semifinals tomorrow night, which is held at the Brighton Town Court, um, which is which is really fancy to, to watch. So they do an amazing job. Um, again, and, and uh, kudos to Mrs. Strong, our ELA teacher and advisor of the mock trial team. 
um, Penny Drive, Scribner Road held a Penny Drive to support students and families of Green Tea Elementary School in Houston, Texas, which was impacted by the hurricane, the most recent hurricane, and they raised a total of $843. And so a lot of pennies, and I'm glad I didn't have to count it. I know. So. Um, just sort of piggybacking on Claire's uh, conversation about Blue Ribbon Week, we have a couple of pictures to share with the board and the community. So the, the quote is really always choose kindness and students throughout the district participated in dress up days and building activities that raised awareness against bullying, violence and abuse. And so this obviously is from Superhero Day. Mm -hmm. I didn't dress up, I told everybody I was a superintendent, <laughs> so that worked. Um, oh dear. And my favorite picture here of our young superhero uh, 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 police officer. Um, oh. giving some tickets out to his teacher. So I love that. I know Nancy Bradstreet put that on our social media, and I, I, I just love that photo. So great kids believing in blue, dressing up, and really coming together. Mm -hmm. And just uh, kudos to all of our principals and the work that went through with Bl Blue Ribbon Week. This is something if you we've had in place for a number of years, maybe I think it's maybe three or four where we've done Blue Ribbon Week, but it started really as just a high school event, and then it sort of was high school and middle school and our four building prints or four elementary building principals and our two secondary building principals came together to make this one of those district wide events so the dress up days were the same at all six schools because they were appropriate for all six age levels and um, I just I just think it's wonderful that it, it just shows two of that about the Penfield unity and coming together as one <coughs> district our Science Olympiad team uh, uh, won six medals at the state competition. So special recognition goes out to Rachel Wells, Ellen Irving, Ariel uh, Stazek, and Jenna Mara. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your names. And no, I didn't leave Claire out because she's also on the Science Olympiad team. So congratulations to our Claire as well. Oh, nice, Claire. Mm -hmm. Um, just an update or a announcement, it is on social media and on our webpage, but uh, to the community is we invite you to come out on Monday, March 19th at 7 p.m. in the PHS Commons, where we'll be holding um, a community forum on the opioid epidemic. And so they'll have a, we'll have an important panel discussion on the crisis we face as a community, not just in Penfield, Monroe County, state and national. And the panel will be led by Dr. Michael Mendoza. and. Uh, Catherine Dean and John Piper and I got to hear Dr. Michael Mendoza at a Monroe County School Board meeting. Um, he is the Monroe County Commissioner of Public Health. He's also a parent of uh, a couple of students at a local district, which I think really helps that message. He's uh, really uh, uh, an expert in the field, as well as experts from the Medical Examiner's Office, Monroe County Sheriff's Office, Monroe County District Attorney's Office, and uh, Delphi Treatment Program, as well as Lori uh, Drescher, who is a a former Penfield Central School District parent whose uh, son actually has come back and spoke at the high school around his uh, struggles and um, recovery from addiction. And so just a very powerful night. I would encourage um, when we do these events, we did one two years ago, it's, it's, it's never too young to come out and hear what they have to say. You don't have to wait until your kids are in high school to be part of this conversation. And so I really just encourage uh, parents of K-12 as well as community members to please consider coming out for this event. And I will now turn it over to Mark Sansusi for the budget. Good evening. Um, I have uh, two quick presentations tonight. Um, I want to. We need to talk a little bit about our BOCES budget, and also uh, just a reminder, really, with regard to the capital project that we'll be offering this year, along uh, with our uh, regular budget. We begin every presentation with a with a every budget presentation um, with just a, a quick reminder and a review of the district goals, the goals of academic achievement and excellence, partnerships and fiscal responsibility. Um, and I always try and point out, I think that all all of our the budget is in a, the financial expression of the district's program affects all of these, um, but but not all at the same time and not all at the in the same way. And tonight's presentation. 
presentation, really the presentation around BOCES, is really one of um, probably I would emphasize in terms of both partnership and fiscal responsibility, um, certainly academic excellence as well, but really it's the partnership that BOCES represents um, that we'll talk about as we go um, through the, tonight's presentation. So with regard to um, the budget calendar, we've been at this for a little while, and as you know, I, I color things green as we, as we knock them off as we move through our calendar. We began in October um, with the establishment of that calendar. We've heard audit reports. We've done some preparatory work around uh, budget goals and assumptions. We've looked at enrollment projections, began looking with the, the uh, began looking at uh, components of the budget with the administrative budget, worked our way through um, uh, the program budget, the, the general program budget, the capital budget, and tonight it's BOCES. Um, we're coming quickly to the end of this process, so uh, at the next meeting, March 27th, we'll look at, we'll have uh, revenue benefits, a total package budget, and we'll start to uh, begin laying the groundwork for finalization that will happen at April uh, the April 7th. 17th meeting. Um, so this is where we're at in terms of, of, um, of progress. You can see the BOCES budget itself is one of the smaller components that we present, but it's also <coughs> one of the more complex. It represents about 11% of the total, um, but there's an awful lot of stuff in there. Um, we buy a number of different kinds of services from BOCES. In total, uh, $10.6 million worth are projected for next year. That's about a um, $247,000 or 2.4 percent increase. Um, you have a detailed uh, sheet showing all of the different line by lines. They're called COSERs, Cooperative Service or Agreements. Um, and I, I'd like to just focus on a few examples tonight rather than try and go through them one by one by one. Um, the, the idea behind BOCES and the reason that I said that it's a focus on, on partnership um, is the fundamental idea, the history of BOCES was that it was formed to provide services to districts that would be too expensive or impractical for districts to provide for themselves. So the classic example of that and what many people still think of when they think of BOCES are the trades. Mm -hmm. You know, we couldn't have our own machine shop or our own um, 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 sorts of auto repair facilities that you can offer, that BOCES can offer, um, f because we would only have a few students for such an expensive facility. But by pooling our resources, um, districts through BOCES can offer those kinds of services. Um, and, th and the other thing that I think BOCES is widely associated with besides those kinds of, of services are um, the services for students with special needs. Um, you know, depending upon a student students' needs, we may have only one or two students with a particular kind of disability that requires particular expertise. Um, for us to be able to provide services for that student, we'd either do it perhaps suboptimally um, or not be able to do it at all. And, and through BOCES, we can, um, we can pool with other similar dis districts with similar students and be able to offer a quality program that meets students' needs. Um, that's, a, as you'll see in a little bit, a large part of what we're buying through BOCES. Um, but this slide's really just intended to show that it goes sort of beyond that. You have a lot of detail, um, but really, um, um, in terms of regular instruction, we offer the career and technical education kinds of things that I talked about, cooperative summer school. Um, summer schools offered on our side of the county through BOCES, um, and we all share by, by hosting it periodically. Um, driver's education, textbook coordination, um, some are just some, it's just some really of the general education services. Lots of our computer services come through BOCES. We buy our internet, our internet filtering. They host our servers. They provide us with expertise and support in terms of software that we purchase through them. Um, so that's a significant portion of our, of our budget there. And they provide us management services. I think the board's probably most familiar with um, the policy manual service that we buy through Erie BOCES. Um, they provide guidance around those kinds of issues, uh, cooperative legal services for student issues, negotiations and so on. They assist us in bidding. Just lots of, um, of support to management um, 
in addition to support to students, and of course special education and transportation. We purchase, Penfield doesn't own uh, buses that are equipped for wheelchair transportation. So um, if it re when we require specialized transportation or when we simply can't accommodate a particular run, um, we just can't fit it in with our available equipment, we'll turn to BOCES. Um, so this is not by any, as the board knows, not really a, uh, in any, by any means a, a, cooper or a, a comprehensive um, list of what we purchase. I just wanted to give the board and the public a flavor of what it is that we are talking about when we discuss it. This is that budget in more detail. Probably the most significant change in here isn't really a change at all, um, but you'll notice in the slide in a moment when I show it in a graphical form, uh, there's a significant decrease in occupational education and a significant increase in regular school instruction. Uh, so on this slide, um, occupational education is 2280. Uh, it's going down about 219,000. Regular school instructions up to 78. The majority of that move is just the move of the Gananda program. Program, the specialized Gananda student program uh, was budgeted by BOCES in one spot and they moved it to another. So it's, 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 it's a transfer, it's not a, really a change or a new program. Most of the other items on here are, are relatively uh, smaller or inconsequential. There's um, uh, finance goes down, but that was really, again, just a reallocation to uh, mostly to uh, computer-assisted instruction. Um, and that's really for the purchase of software. Some software was budgeted and charged by BOCES under my code, my code, under uh, finance, uh, and uh, it's been moved to um, uh, special education, or I'm sorry, to um, computer-assisted instruction. And Tarkowski's code. Uh, <laughs> when you go wrong, you might as well double down. So, um, the um, um, this is the this is what that budget looks like in um, in uh, graphical form, and you can see. Um, you know, that while we're buying lots of stuff, by far, by far, um, the largest service, uh, both in terms, uh, in pure dollar amount, um, is special education services. And that includes uh, services to student students, but also related services. We purchase occupational uh, education, speech therapy services, um, um, services for students with hearing impairments, uh, uh, testing services, evaluation, services, uh, quite a variety of, of uh, supports to students with special needs through BOCES. And I think this pretty clearly demonstrates that that's really in terms of the BOCES budget where the money's at. Um, the uh, next port, as I mentioned before, the next portion of the budget will be um, a review of the entire budget, um, along with benefits, fund balance, and we'll take a first look at a complete budget. Um, we need to review and adopt it by April 17th at the April 17th meeting. Um, and it also adopt the property tax report card. We need to adopt at that meeting uh, because we need to begin making our um, public notices and, and our advertising and adopting in time uh, for our, our legally required notices in time for the May 1st public hearing, um, which is really sort of, you know, we talk about budget all year long, um, really the last public hearing of the budget in a particular, a different way, the three-part budget ways at that May first meeting um, and then uh, the, the vote on May 15th. Um, May 15th from 6 to 9 a.m. at the high school um, and we certainly would encourage people to come out. If you're interested in this presentation or any lots of others, um, including video clips and so on, they're all online um, at our website under budget info under the quick links. So are there any, you have lots of BOCES stuff, but uh, were there any particular questions? Board members? No, I, I think not. Thank, thank you. I want to also just spend a moment. Um, I know the boards uh, heard this, but um, there's a little bit of information here tonight. I just want to um, uh, 
provide a little bit of new information and also just really remind everybody uh, that as one of the one of later in the agenda tonight you're going to be adopting the resolution establishing the date of the vote for this which is the same night as our uh, general fund budget um, election or um, purchase a school bus and election of, of um, board members um, but this is we want to take the opportunity just really to remind everyone that that this is moving forward that it will be there and just to remind everyone of the scope of it um, so um, as we know, um, it's really a, an elementary school um, additions project along with some minor work at Bay Trail and the high school. So four classrooms at Scribner, Cobbles and Elementary, four classrooms each for a total in 12, of 12. Um, and at Scribner, um, expansions to the gym and cafeteria and parking improvements. One of the, uh, one of the other main themes of this really is improvement um, at all three of those buildings in access to the buildings on the outside. So um, parent drop-offs, bus loops, um, really the kinds of site work improvements that we hope will improve safety and traffic flow on the outsides of the buildings. Um, um, at Cobbles, um, uh, some serving line renovations. The cafeteria itself is trapped inside the building and we're not proposing to change it. Um, but again, there are lots of uh, parking and uh, parent traffic improvements. I'll flip quickly through those slides in just a second. Um, and then at Indian Landing, a cafeteria expansion and lots of site work in terms of the bus loop um, and parent drop-off. At the high school, um, and at Bay Trail, um, a portion of the budget is for um, what we call building condition survey items. Those are repairs, renovations, um, the kinds of things as a homeowner or property owner that you have to do to, to keep your buildings in good repair. Um, so things like boiler replacement, exhaust, kitchen exhaust systems, and so on. Um, and to include, um, um, replacement of the chiller, which is the air conditioning unit here at the high school that's currently out of service, so repair of, of that as well. In terms of construction costs, uh, at the elementary school work is about $12.8 million. The high school and Bay Trail building condition survey work about four. Total of $17 million. Uh, construction contingency incidentals and, and fees bring the total cost of the project to $22,588,000. Um, that's going to be financed in part. Um, it'll be bonded um, and will be financed in part the bonds will be reduced by, the amount we have to bond will be reduced by use of our $7 million from our capital reserve, and we plan on using um, about $820,000 against early debt service payments um, to help um, smooth the introduction of this into our budget. The goal, I know you've all seen this before, um, but the goal here is to maintain stability in terms of uh, the difference between the state aid we receive from the, from the state and the, um, and the expense in our budget for these kinds of capital projects. So right now, uh, because we've done cash projects for so many years, um, our budget, the return to our budget is about a million and a half dollars positive uh, to expense. And we don't want that to grow um, because of the potential impacts with the tax gap and the challenges that that poses, but we certainly don't want it to shrink either. So um, um, this project and was fairly carefully designed to ensure that that continues out in the f into the future. Um, there'll be other projects, there'll be other projects that'll need to be integrated with this, um, but our goal is always going to be sort of to maintain stability in the, in the, in the budget so that taxpayers don't see um, a spike in their, in, in their <laughs> bill. And this is intended to do that. Um, there'll be a, a uh, much more detailed, um, including a, re a review of the plans, talking about the classrooms and so on at a community information night on April 23rd uh, at 7 p.m. here at the high school. Um, and the vote on it again will be on May 15th at the same time as the vote um, for, the, for the budget um, from six to nine in the high school. Are there any questions about this? Board members? Apparently not. Thank you. For, I, I, it feels like we've been through it a lot, uh, a lot of times, but um, I appreciate your patience with one more. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Okay. 
All right. Wow. I guess we're kind of moving right along, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we're on page three, actually. Okay. Um, all right, board business. Nothing for facilities. On to financial items. Adopt, <coughs> excuse me, adopt the 2018 elementary additions project vote proposition. Just go right here, okay. The next resolution authorizes the vote on the 2018 elementary additions project and establishes the language for the voter proposition. It also confirms that the district has complied with the State Environmental Quality Review Act and gives notice that the district may, fi may finance and levy taxes for the project. We will read the abbreviated form of the notice as part of the next item on the agenda. Just move to the motion, right? So, yeah, yes. Adopt 2018 Elementary Additions Project Vote Proposition. We have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. And then you take then it, I'll right? Yeah. Julie put to a vote as follows. Mrs. Babiars? Aye. Mrs. Benati Chidzi? Aye. Mrs. Dean? Aye. Mr. Ellis? Aye. Ms. Rotney? Aye. Okay. Five in favor, none opposed. All right. Two absent. To absent, right. So then, going right over here. So board members, are going to page five on our agenda. Notice of annual meeting, budget vote and election, 5-15-18. The Board of Education must pass a resolution calling for an annual hearing and vote of the district for the 2018-19 school year. We have a motion and a second to hold the annual hearing of the voters on May 1st, 2018, and the vote on the budget and other propositions on May 15th, 2018, and that notice of the same be given in accordance with the law. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments before I read? Okay, thank you. Notice of annual meeting, budget vote, and election, Penfield Central School District, Towns of Penfield, Parenton, Pittsford, Brighton, Macedon, and Walworth, Counties of Monroe and Wayne, New York. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing of the qualified voters of the Penfield Central School District, Monroe County, New York, will be held in the senior high school building in said district on Tuesday, May 1st, 2018, at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for the presentation of the budget that the annual meeting vote and election of the qualified voters of the Penfield Central School District of the Town of Penfield, Monroe County, New York, will be held at the senior high school in said district on Tuesday, May 15, 2018, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, at which time the polls will be open to vote by voting by machine or ballot upon the following items. One, to elect three members of the board for three-year terms commencing July 1, 2018 and expiring on June 30th, 2021 to succeed Mrs. Catherine Dean, Mr. Mark Elledge, and Mrs. Carol Nazra. Two, the adoption of the following propositions. Proposition one, shall the following resolution be adapted to wit? to adapt the annual budget of the school district for the fiscal year 2018-2019 and to authorize the requisite portion thereof to be raised by taxation on the taxable property of the district. Proposition two, shall the following resolution be adopted to wit. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Penfield Central School District is hereby authorized and directed to purchase three 66 passenger type school buses and four 30 passenger type school buses and to expend from the capital fund therefore a sum not exceeding $598,000 with $400,000 of such cost to be appropriated and expended from the 2018-19 general fund budget and to appropriate and expend the balance not to exceed $198,000 from the 2017 School Bus Reserve Fund established pursuant to Section 3651 of the Education Law. Proposition 3, shall the following resolution be adopted to wit. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Penfield Central School District is hereby authorized to undertake certain capital improvements consisting of the construction of additions to and construction and reconstruction of 
school buildings and facilities, various site improvements, and the acquisition of certain original furnishings, equipment, and apparatus and other incidental improvements required in connection therewith for such construction and school use, all at an estimated maximum aggregate cost of $22,588,000, and to appropriate and expend from the existing building capital reserve fund $7 million for such costs, and that the balance of such cost, or so much thereof as may be necessary, shall be raised by the levy of a tax to be collected in annual installments with such tax to be partially offset by state aid available therefore, and in, in anticipation of such tax, debt obligations of the school district as may be necessary not to exceed $15,588,000 shall be issued. Budget information. That a copy of the statement of the amount of money which will be required to fund the school district's budget for 2018-2019, exclusive of public monies together with propositions to be voted upon, may be obtained by any resident of the district during business hours beginning Tuesday, April 24, 2018 on the district's internet website, www.penfield.edu, during normal business hours at N at any public library or free association library within the district or during the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. except Saturday, Sunday, and holidays at the administration building and at each of the following schoolhouses in which school is maintained. Administration building, 2590 Atlantic Avenue, Rochester. Penfield High School, 25 High School Drive, Penfield. Bay Trail Middle School, 1760 Scribner Road, Penfield. Cobbles Elementary School, 140 Gebhardt Road, Penfield. Harris Hill Elementary School, 2126 Penfield Road, Penfield. Indian Landing Elementary School, 702 Landing Road North, Rochester. Scribner Road Elementary School, 1750 Scribner Road, Penfield. Petitions nominating board candidates. That petitions nominating candidates for the Office of Member of the Board of Education were available as of February 26, 2018, and shall be filed with the clerk of said school district at her office in the administration building not later than Monday, April 16, 2018, between 9 o'clock a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. Each petition shall be directed to the clerk of the district and shall be signed by at least 20, well, okay, it says 26 it's 20, and 28. It's 28 is the proper one. All right, 28 voters of the district and must state the name and residence of the candidate and the residence of each signer. Absentee ballots. That applications for absentee ballots will be obtainable on or after March 29, 2018, between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, except holidays, from the district district clerk in person or by calling 585-249-5702. Completed applications must be received by the district clerk at least seven days before the election if the ballot is to be mailed to the voter or the, or the day before the election if the ballot is to be delivered personally to the voter. Absentee ballots must be received by the district clerk not later than 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Tuesday, May 15, 2018. That a list of persons to whom absentee ballots are issued will be available for public inspection in the office of the district clerk on and after May 8, 2018, between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, except holidays, prior the day set for the annual election. Any qualified voter present in the polling place may object to the voting of the ballot upon appropriate grounds for making his or her challenge and the reasons therefore known to the inspector of election before the close of the polls. Qualifications to vote. That the qualified voters of the school district shall be entitled to vote at said annual vote and election. A qualified voter is one who is, one, a citizen of the United States of America, two, 18 years of age or older, and three, resident within the school district for a per period of 30 days next preceding the annual vote and election. The school district may require all persons offering to vote at the budget vote and election to provide one form of proof of residency pursuant to Education Law Section 2018-C. Such form may include a driver's license, a non-driver identification identification card, a utility bill, or a voter registration card. 
Upon offer of proof of residency, the school district may also require all persons offering to vote to provide their signature, printed, printed name, and address. Propositions to amend the budget. That pursuant to a rule, Board Policy 1650, adopted August 14, 2007, in accordance with Section 20352 and Section 2008 of the Education Law, any referenda or propositions to amend the budget, otherwise to be submitted for voting at said election, must have been filed with the Penfield Central School District Board of Education at the Administration Building on or before Friday, March 16, 2018 at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, must be typed or printed in English, must be directed to the clerk of the school district and signed by at least 70 voters of the district. However, the school board will not entertain any petition to place before the voters any proposition the purpose of which is not within the powers of the voters to determine, or any proposition which, which fails to include a specific appropriation where the expenditure of monies is required by the proposition. District Clerk Sharon B. Erkfitz, dated 3-13-18, School District, Penfield Central School District, Town of Penfield, County of Monroe, New York. Mrs. Babier? Aye. Mrs. Bonatti Chitzi? Aye. Mrs. Dean? Aye. Mr. Elledge? Aye. And Mr. Otney? Aye. Five in favor, none opposed, and two absent. Okay. And that is that. that thank you. Good. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. So now we're on to President's remarks or presentations, which I I wasn't going to say anything. It's all right. You used to say that a lot, right? <laughs> I, I think I did. <laughs> and um, any, okay, for unfinished business, um, Mark, you and Dr. Putnam and John were in Albany? That is correct. We, this is our annual trip to meet with the legislatures during their budget cycle. Mm -hmm. Uh, in which in New York State the budget cycle uh, includes a lot of legislation because the governor can put in uh, whatever legislation he chooses as part of the budget bill and there's a lot of negotiation between all the bodies. The main issues of course are funding which is what we have every year that's the main part of this and it's the usual um, you know, the governor promotes it low, the legislature um, wants a high bud funding for the district and it will end up in the middle. And that seems to be going pretty much as middle and as it normally does and they I think says about a billion dollars is what they expected as far as that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, but to, to some of the comments earlier, there were, uh, uh, there's a lot of bills related to school safety being proposed and, and some have, I think, already, at the time we were there, had passed the Senate. Uh, so there's a lot of bills there. When we talked to our representatives, one of the key things they understood was not to make it prescriptive, although some of the bills were very prescriptive. You know, for example, uh, I think one of them was requiring us to report on the ratio of students to um, safety officers to counselors and, and, and the like for each school. And so it's very prescriptive, very much another reporting thing that we would have to do uh, and about the ratio and you know you kind of wonder if down the road are they going to mandate a ratio. Yeah. So th so that's that was kind of not one aspect of it. But in talking to them they all really wanted to make things available. They wanted to give the districts options not tell them what to do. And I think we're getting they're getting good at understanding the needs to not not prescribe to us but but enable us. Mm -hmm. uh, Along those lines, when you talk about funding, you know they are they are aware of the need for funding. A lot of the funding would tend to be they were looking in terms of grants, which means grants are something you you spend the money and you apply for the money and you kind of get it after the fact. At some point, you might get some percentage of what you spent after the fact, and then grants don't last forever. It might right. be a year or two to get things kickstarted, but then you're on your own, which is different than normal, like foundation aid, which we get every year. Right. So it's you know, they're they, they're trying to find that balance. Uh, the other thing that they were doing is there's, there was the there's the technology grant. They a couple of years ago they made they created a technology grant where we could uh, do certain approved technology uh, projects and programs, capital improvements, and get funding for that. And they're expanding. They're talking about expanding that includes safety activity, mm -hmm. safety capital projects for the technology thing. So, so they're looking at different ways of doing that. And then uh, finally, uh, as along the lines of when we talk about the tax cap and the tax cap computations. One thing we talk to them about a lot is 
is looking at uh, revising the tax cap computation. You know, tax cap, I think everyone acknowledges, is not going away, mm -hmm. uh, and it serves, it serves a purpose, which is holding districts accountable. There are some things which the district has no control over, and, and, it, and it has an, kind of an inverse effect. For, but the, to start with, there was a lot of talk about making the expenditures for safety be, exempt, be outside the formula, and, and I, I would leave to Mark to explain okay. how that formula works, because it's complex, but basically, if, if we spent more money for safety, that would not be considered part of the increase in a tax gap. Mm -hmm. And that's really what they're trying to do. And then we were also talking about things that are not within our control. One of the biggest ones is the uh, teacher, uh, the TRS, teacher retirement, what's the F, F teacher fund? Retirement yeah. TRS. And then the, and the employee, employee retirement Correct. system. Those two, uh, we don't get told, we get told how much we have to spend more or less every year. We don't have a say in that. And what happens is that's not, you know, that's not something that we're accountable for, uh, where the tax cap is meant to hold us accountable. We're not accountable for it. And then it actually has an inverse effect because if they, if there's an increase in the amount of money we have to fund, then we have to account for that to maintain our tax cap by decreasing increasing money in programs. So it's actually, it's a, it's a adverse outcome. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we'd like, we've talked to them about trying to get that exempted from that formulation, formula. So we're still accountable for the increases in the, rev, in, the, in the levy that we cause, but we're not accountable for the increases that the state causes. And then we don't have that trying to reduce our spending for our purposes because of what's something the state's done. So these are things we, the important thing is, these are things we've done every year. We go to them, to the, to the legislature, we talk to them every year, we have a good rapport, we talk to them at our legislative breakfast, and these are ongoing conversations. So it's, a lot of it's just a continual education of the representatives. And, and it does come to pass when they start writing uh, legislation, these things do stick over time, and, and we are gaining traction. So it's, it's very worthwhile that we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've always been good. I think we're one of the, only the handful of districts that have spent sent people every year that I've been there, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's a very important part of our job. Yeah, and you say that um, there's traction, and that's what I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. I mean, it sounds like that is some movement on the tax cap, because mm -hmm. a few years ago, talk about the tax cap, it's like, oh, stop right. talking, and nothing's happening. Right. So but now, they're seeing where there might be some wiggle room. Right, so traction, I think we have to, we have to look at the, in the time frame of which well. legislation occurs. So traction is, the, I think there's an acknowledgement mm -hmm. and an understanding and an acceptance of, of the argument we have. Right. Uh, will that turn into legislation this year? Well, maybe next year or the year after, there's no telling, but at right. least we, our, our argument is gaining credibility. Yeah. And that's the first step in getting them to actually act upon it. And mm -hmm. so it might, we don't know, it might happen this year, it might not, but right. the main thing is we have made the case in it and it's gotten credible. Okay, and then Claire, I'm glad you're still here because what we just heard was, you know, uh, about funding for school safety situations. Now we've had this problem with our schools, you know, nationwide for many, many years. And something's different this time around. And one plausible uh, variable is uh, student activity uh, surrounding this. And so, uh, you know, there's attention being drawn to it based on that kind of reaction from students. So I think that's, uh, I mean, I think that's really kind of unfortunate and cool at the same time. Very unfortunate that it took so long, but very cool that, um, like Dr. Putnam said before about our future leaders, taking some, uh, you know, taking some action. And so now we're seeing something here in, uh, in Albany. You know, they're discussing it, they're talking about it. And this whole business with the school tax cap has taken years and years and years to get any kind of traction. So um, that sounds pretty positive from this time around, yeah, I have to I say. I feel like it was a very yeah. positive trip. Well, good. That's great. Thank you for going, too, to you and John and uh, Dr. Yeah, Putnam. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's great. Well, board members, any questions or comments for Mark? Okay. Yes, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Just because we're talking a whole lot. It was on. You're just, he's cutting me off. We're talking so much about school safety, and um, and it just made me think. We had a, a recent tragic event in our community, mm -hmm. and it just makes me again think top of mind about school safety. And I'm wondering if we, I know we're sort of the end of our agenda tonight, but want to think about having some discussions around what we're doing for um, 
just to keep students safe around attendance policies and arrival and dismissal because that seems to be sort of a community topic mm -hmm. that's going on locally right now okay um, yeah, just, um, and, and Lisa and I have talked before this, but for the listening public, when we talk about a, a tragedy in our, in our community, we're talking specifically about the student who lost his life from the Rochester City School District. So just for people who are watching, right. I didn't want them to think something happened in Penfield. Oh, oh, yeah. But it is right down the road. Um, and so absolutely, we can you know talk with uh, Catherine and Mark at agenda setting on doing an overview of our attendance procedures. But just having just spoken to you yesterday about it, and one of the things I and meeting with the principals and talking with them over the last two days is is we found we're relatively unique in the sense that we have adults meeting the buses at all six of our schools in the morning which is really fantastic and if you you know it, for both parent drop off and for and for buses and so it is sort of that that staff piece and so it's kudos to them in a sense of because that really is they're like mailmen I mean it's rain sun mm -hmm. snow Rochester nor'easters and and they're out there greeting greeting the students uh, which serves two purposes of really being about building climate and culture and, and positivity but also making sure as the kids get off they're they're coming where they're supposed to be which is always more of an issue at a secondary level because um, they tend to wander a little bit more than than our and our elementary school kids but it, again having those conversations with students and then you know we um, one of the things that's interesting in Penfield is that we do attendance uh, through infinite campus we have attendance clerks that that check that attendance throughout the day but we don't use a robocall and so for parents who don't know that that we, we use personal phone calls and we find one of the positives with that is that we know we're getting somebody or at least we're knowing getting the right voicemail if it's a voicemail um, mm -hmm. I just heard a story actually from a staff member whose kids go to a different school system and uh, her son uh, keeps getting a robocall um, because they the wrong numbers in the system and so and so you know he, he didn't realize what the phone calls were and finally they called and said whoever the student is who's not in school he's never getting the parents are never getting it because it's going to my son's um, voicemail so that personal touch I think is helpful mm -hmm. and I think it hits and I can talk about this next board meeting but it hits that partnership goal because in speaking with our attendance clerks it's just a that reminder to parents that if you know your child's out sick or they're out of school for whatever reason, that proactive phone call to the schools is so helpful because it means it's one less phone call they have to make. And that they don't mind calling and as a superintendent, I might be guilty of not always calling when my son's home sick. And I, it's nice to get that phone call and verify he's with, you know, he's with me or he's with my wife. Um, but it is that partnership, whatever we can do to keep reminding families that if they know their child's out, it just lessens that, that attendance burden. So um, I'd be happy to talk with Catherine and, and Mark around agenda setting on what a presentation could look like at the next meeting. But again, I think on behalf of the district and, and the board, just our heart goes out to the family and, mm -hmm. and the yeah. community in Rochester, uh, you know, lost a who lost a student which is just everybody's worst nightmare yeah so thank you for bringing that up okay any other questions or comments all right well then may I have a motion and a second that uh, the meeting be adjourned at 805 p.m. So moved. any questions or comments all those in favor none opposed thank you thank you oh.